I got an email that asked me to just solve all 12 of these from part one and then I'll work on part two a bit later. Um, part two uh, really um, I'll talk about the book in a minute but uh, part two especially uh, the book is going to be helpful. Uh, I just happen to uh, enjoy these kinds of problems and it's fun for me so um, here's part one question number one from the February 2016 release uh, and I'm gonna give a little bit of introduction on this one uh, I did problem number three first uh, just because it was an easy one and I just wanted to give it a shot uh, but I'm gonna be going to do one two four five six all the way to twelve uh, now uh, just some background on what I think you would need uh, you want your techniques uh, to be efficient uh, so what I mean by that is uh, you don't want to get hung up on a particular question and you always want to uh, have a next step or maybe a backup plan. Uh, obviously you want your techniques to be accurate uh, and you want your techniques to stand up to these very stressful exam conditions. Uh, my own licensure exam, um, I got up, the proctor asked me, you know, am I ready for my break? And I said, well, I, I finished the exam. Uh, and the way that the exam was set up, it's just uh, you have X number of hours, one break uh, to take the exam. Uh, and I've always been relatively quick at taking uh, standardized exams. Um, it's just something I, I enjoy. Um, so it's, when, I, when I think of my practice sessions, uh, I, I don't think of them as difficult. I think of them as quite enjoyable. So, uh, But I've been a pharmacist for 19 years, so I've been doing this for a while. Uh, the new version of the pre-reg exam is uh, more Americanized, and uh, maybe I'll, I'll better say we're like an American exam. Uh, where we're focusing on memory, reading comprehension, and critical thinking without references. Um, we just don't have a BNF. We just don't have a British National Formulary, a reference that everyone can agree, yes, this is a good one. Um, so, uh, But let's talk a little bit more about that. Uh, I wrote a book called Memorizing Pharmacology, A Relaxed Approach, and, and I saw a number of UK purchases from Amazon.com UK, and I want to support my readers. And, um, the book will be especially helpful with part two, and I'll show you that later. But uh, The book focuses on mnemonics uh, for 200 drugs using prefixes, infixes, and suffixes. And say, well, you know, those are American drugs, those are British names, um, you know, how's that going to help me? Well, this works well for pre-reg students with the United States Adopted Names Council and the British approved names, uh, well, the generic name overlap. Um, uh, it's actually quite similar. And if you want to help someone that's from the United States in Britain, or you want to uh, help someone from Britain in the United States, it would actually be much, much better to talk in generic names uh, than to try to uh, get brand names across, because they can be quite different. Uh, my personal opinion, uh, the British National Formulary, or BNF, is a fantastic unifying book. Uh, it brought all of these health professions together. I uh, say, this is the book we agree on. These are the treatments and regimens we agree on um, and it's uh, it's just a wonderful book I've uh, quite a few copies from uh, different generations and I'm looking at um, that big shift uh, I think it was back in the 80s where it went from uh, giving a significant pharmacology background to um, less um, so it's interesting that it was a little bit more readable actually back then and it's really really a small volume it's uh, hardcover it fit really well in your pocket now the new BNF is certainly a lot bigger um, but by tagging the BNF I, I don't know I thought the students uh, learned spatially they they had ownership over this print edition I mean they, they certainly made it their own uh, but I understand the the desire to standardize testing conditions so that one student that has tabbed their book so much doesn't have a tremendous advantage over someone who doesn't uh, especially that it looks like the UK and the United States are, are similar in that we have uh, a bit of an oversupply of pharmacists. Uh, so uh, creating a BNF type book would actually work well here in the United States. We're trying to um, put together our interprofessional activities, get the physicians and nurses and pharmacists working together as a team, and, and I think we would do well to follow the UK's example. Uh, I also understand why we don't really talk too much because medications in the UK can't come to the US, US medications can't come there uh, for the most part. Okay. Well, let's get on with the, the exam questions and I'll uh, find my laser pointer here. Um, 
So we have a six-year-old child who's been prescribed Gaviscon suspension, 10 mLs, four times a day. Gaviscon suspension contains 3.1 millimoles of sodium per five mLs. The recommended daily RDA of salt for a six-year-old child is three grams, equivalent to 1.2 grams of sodium per day. Uh, the atomic mass of sodium is 23. What I'm going to do for each of these is I'm going to tell you to translate to conversion factors. Uh, for most of them, I'll actually put the paragraph twice so you see it two times. But what you really want to do is get it so that you've got a lot of these words and turn them into numbers. At least is how I do it. Um, so instead of the way it's written, and if I was taking this test, I would just actually just circle it uh, and maybe or maybe cross it out and then just put on top. Uh, this way, but you know, with the uh, keyboard, I can just do this and highlight it. So, a six-year-old child has been prescribed Gaviscon suspension, 10 mLs per dose. Okay, so I changed 10 mLs uh, four times a day, which is really saying 10 mLs per dose, four doses in one day. So, 10 mLs per dose, four doses in one day, and Gaviscon contains 3.1 millimoles of sodium over 5 mLs. So that one's already a nice conversion factor. The recommended daily allowance of salt for a six-year-old child is three grams, 1.2 grams sodium per day. Atomic mass of sodium is 23. What we really care about is that it's 23 milligrams per one millimole. Okay. Uh, and then what is the per uh, percentage of this child's uh, recommended daily salt allowance? It's contained in total daily dose of Gaviscon um, suspension. I'll give your answer to the nearest whole number. So what we're looking for globally here is the percent daily salt allowance. So total daily salt uh, dose in milligrams from the Gaviscon over the daily allowance of salt in milligrams. To make it a percentage, we multiply times 100. Okay. So the first thing we're going to calculate is that top number. What's the total daily dose in milligrams? Okay. And the way that I do things, and again, I have a strong background in organic chemistry. Uh, my understanding from what I've seen uh, in the UK, extremely strong in the physical sciences. Uh, so this stuff should be uh, very comfortable going from right to left. We're in organic chemistry. Here's what we've made. How did we get there? So we're going to go from right to left. So we see the top, we have milligrams. On the bottom, we have day. So it's something, this must either be milligrams or this must either be day. Um, and what we do is we look back to our uh, original uh, paragraph and we see that, yep, 23 milligrams uh, is one millimole of sodium, so we put that there. Now we need to cross this millimoles out because it's not over here. So we need to have millimoles up top to cross off this, and we see that we have 3.1 millimoles of sodium is in 5 mLs. Okay? We don't have mLs over here, so we must cross it off. And we see that we have 10 mLs in one dose. And we don't have doses over here, so we must get rid of that. We have four doses in one day. So to check our work, we come down here. We cross off the ones that are diagonally um, opposed to each other. So we get rid of millimoles of sodium, mLs, and doses. And we're left with day per milligram. So good, we have what we need over here. Uh, and then we do the math, uh, which works out to 570.4. Uh, milligrams. So we've calculated the top, we've calculated the daily dose of this Gaviscon or the sodium in the Gaviscon, um, and now we need to calculate the daily allowance of salt uh, in milligrams. So to calculate the daily amount, uh, there's the fast way and the slow way, uh, I guess you could call it. Uh, the fast way is to just say, all right, well, I'm going from grams, a larger quantity, to milligrams, which are smaller. And when I go from a larger quantity to smaller quantity, I move over three places with the decimal. So 1.2 becomes 1, 2, 3, and we have 1,200 milligrams. If you're not comfortable with that, maybe you're stressed and you don't know, should I go to the left, should I go to the right? Uh, the other way to do it is the same thing. We know that we need uh, milligrams uh, in one day. So what do we have? 1,000 milligrams is one gram. 1.2 grams in one day, cross off these grams, we get 1,200 milligrams in one day. Uh, now we're going to take those two numbers uh, that we've calculated, put one over the other. So calculate the percentage of daily salt allowance. Total daily dose in milligrams 
uh, of the sodium in the Gaviscon over daily allowance of sodium in the milligrams times 100 to get the percentage, uh, 570.4 over 1200 times 100 makes 47.53%, so about 48% uh, when you round up. So the answer percentage of child's recommended daily salt allowance is contained in a total daily dose of Gaviscon suspension is 48% to the nearest whole number.